Hey, this is Mark Goldberg, and welcome to another episode of Mark Vlogs Watches. And let's do a quick wristwatch check. This is the um, Jean Richard Aquascope, and it is the um, it is the piece that we're going to review and unbox today. So stand by, and I think I'll do sort of like an unboxing, a recreation of it anyway, and a review all in one video. Stand by. But first, let's take a look at some other wristwatches that I just happen to have laying around the table right now. Cut. My friend Casey came around to play, <laughs> you know, so we played Barbies and uh, a little hard with the glare here, but here's a, a Rolex GMT. Here is the Rolex, oh, this is worth getting out of the light a little bit. Here's the Rolex James camera on deep sea, sea dweller. Damn that chandelier. Uh, oh, and by the way, I have reviewed these two watches. I've also reviewed this, although, and this is a um, the um, uh, Breitling Super Ocean chronograph. I think I'm going to get it off of this strap code and put it back on the factory rubber. And um, this is a Breitling Avenger 2 GMT. But let's get into the Jean Richard. Okay, so here we are, and we're looking at the Jean Richard box. Now, first of all, be aware this is a cardboard box on the one hand. On the other hand, you strangely attractive for cardboard. Jean Richard is a brand that is a, um, a wholly owned subsidiary by Gerard uh, Perigo, uh, much the same way that Tudor is a wholly owned subsidiary of Rolex, okay? So there is definitely a whole lot of heritage behind this watch, and it's named after a, a, an old-time watchmaker named Jean Richard, who started working in 1681. So this brand does have some heritage, although this is the red-headed, unloved stepchild of the Gerard Perigo line. Okay, so we take the box off, and in here, we actually have some accoutrement that, um, that means stuff, man, man stuff. And I have to say, when I explain to you what I think this is, um, I think it's a little bit cooler than some of the crap that typically comes along with a watch. Although, I gotta say, if watch guys were smart, they'd start packing knives, uh, like pocket knives, along with watches, because dudes seem to like that a lot better than what this is. It appeals to me. I'm never going to use it, but I think it's kind of cool. I think you're going to not like it at all. But, you know, hey, I am a cosmopolitan man with some metrosexual flair. Okay, so let's pull the little travel case out here. And, um, you know, I don't really think this is leather. It looks good, but, yeah, it smells a little bit like chemistry. So I, I, I think it's a Naga hide vinyl, in, you know, whatever. But look, this is bloody attractive, this thing. And I think it's a little watch, in theory, travel case. We'll come back to this in a minute. Get the little JR insignia right there. Okay, we open this puppy up, and there is the watch. It is a big sucker. I want to say it's supposed to be 44 millimeters, but honestly, it looks more like 45. It's a really interesting watch, so we're going to take it out and have a little look. But before we do that, let me just set the watch aside for a moment. And let's take a look at this case, which is, uh, in theory, a travel case for the watch, and it can certainly be used for that. Um, and, and a nice one at that, but notice it's got these little, you know, uh, D-rings on the side, and it also comes along with this strap. So I think, which basically what you have here is a small man purse, right? Because when you attach this here and here, this guy is pretty long, you'd be able to throw it across your shoulder and have a little man purse or purse. Um, you know, uh, these are really popular in Italy, not so popular in the United States, particularly not in Texas, Georgia, Alabama, Louisiana, Mississippi, or other places of this sort of origin. If you guys are eating gumbo and, and, and chopping wood for uh, fun and profit, well, you probably don't like this much. But hey, you know, if you're from New York or uh, California, you might like it. Uh, I'm from Chicago, so I think it's cool, but I probably won't, won't actually wear it. But I think it's a cool thing. And this one comes along with the papers, which I'm just going to kind of do a little bit of a cover up here. Okay, so you're not, you know, but it, this is just a paper. But uh, look, the purchase date of it is fairly new, and um, there's a lot of factory warranty still on this watch. Okay, so we're going to set all of this aside. And let's now have a close look at the watch itself. In fact... Let me get it off of here. Now, Jean Richard supplies this aquascope, and this is a 300 millimeter watch. It's supposed to be 44, but boy, it wears more like a 45, and it's 13.2 thick, okay? 
and it's uh, good down to 300 meters. I don't know in this light if you're really going to be able to detect it. There, you kind of can see now. There are lines running in a vertical pattern on this, uh, on this dial. So this dial has some sort of texture. I really don't know what you would call it, but it's kind of cool. It's not flat black. It's not gray. It's sort of in between. And there is a texture that you can see when the light hits it just right. And I like that. It gives it a certain depth. Um, the, the, the watch is configured really interestingly. It's a cushion case on the one hand. So that makes it wear, you know, really quite wide for the width. But look at these lugs. They're, they're like truncated. They're like cut off. These lugs have been circumcised like a Jewish baby on his seventh day of life. Whap! Um, and that makes the watch sort of not overly enormous to wear. In fact, let me just put it on and you'll see. You'll see that because, um, because the lugs are not lapping over my wrist, you know, normal, I, I bet you this thing doesn't go much more than about 42, 43, um, 44 in terms of, uh, you know, lug to lug. All right. And, uh, you know, for pur purposes of comparison, the Rolex Deep Sea goes uh, like 52. So uh, this wears in a kind of a impressive wrist presence takes up a lot of real estate on the wrist on the one hand on the other hand if you got a smaller wrist you could probably still pull this thing off because these lugs are, are not going to lap over your wrist now you can see that this is a a rubber strap and normally i just hate rubber because and i don't even like i don't even like leather because i don't like tang buckles but this has a really nice one piece one piece stainless signed deployment clasp I got it upside down. There you go. So it's signed. It's sturdy, and um, it, it takes uh, you know, two buttons to release it. So it's very good for easy on, easy off. Now, the case back is simultaneously interesting and disappointing. I say interesting because uh, without lugs, it just has an interesting form. You know, the form factor of this thing, it's, 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 you know, it's kind of a circle within a square. And so I think that that's interesting, but I think it's a little disappointing in that this um, laser engraving is something that you would find. Um, it's not very deep cut. You get a better look at it there now. It's not real deep cut, and it's of the kind of quality that you would find on a micro brand. Look, it looks nice, doesn't it? But it's something that you would expect to find on a $300 Borealis micro brand, for example. Now, that's another thing. This watch it has a retail price of about $3,200. And uh, on the one hand, on the other hand, I, I paid like a tiny, tiny fraction of that. Um, I, I sort of got the friendship discount on this watch. But I'm seeing them on eBay for $800, $900, which I think is a much fairer price for it. I paid a lot less than that even. And I'm glad because um, there are one or two things about it that I don't like. If it had a uh, stainless steel bracelet on it, which they do come in a stainless steel, I probably would like that better. Um, however, this is a very nice rubber strap. It is signed. It has the deployment clasp, so I'm not at all unhappy with that. The only thing about this watch I don't that I don't like is the bezel action. Now, the bezel itself looks really nice. Um, I believe this is uh, an aluminum insert. It might be a liquid metal though. It, it's it's awful nice. So the it the, it looks really good. Okay, um, and the gear cut teeth are very nice, and um, and they are high polished on the edges, and the space in between the teeth is a matte finish. Right. So that makes a very nice contrast to this watch. Oh, and before we get to the bezel, notice the signed crown, but also the vertical striped pattern of the matte finish. On the edge so it's a handsome watch but listen to this crappy action I never thought I would encounter a bezel cruddier than the Seiko prospects but this this is worse this is worse and let me see if I can you see that it has back play and 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 back play that's probably I don't know. That's like sloppy seconds, you know, on your girlfriend. It just doesn't feel good um, on the one hand. 
On the other hand, you know, it, it's not going to go the wrong way. It's just not, it just doesn't, it's not satisfying, you know, um, the way every other aspect of this watch really is. Okay, now it is a screw down crown. I'm going to unscrew it here. It's a screw down crown. It's got an, either an Etta or a Salita movement in it. You don't really know which. I suppose you'd have to open it up to know because they've used both in this watch. Um, but the crown unscrews, hand winding and hacking. Um, and there is a date at about 4, 430, you know, position there. We'll just screw this back in. There is knurling uh, right here. This is a generous size, unprotected, no crown guards, crown. I like it. The knurling is kind of smooth, so it doesn't have the best finish in terms of gripping it. But once again, I'm pretty sure you're not going to be changing the time zone underwater. Look, all in all, if you pay well under $1,000 for this watch, I think you're going to be happy for it. If you're starting to pay up in the $1,000 range, ooh, I think you're going to be unhappy, and I think you're never going to be able to flip it. Um, the loom is really good, so I'll throw, throw just a, a loom shot in at the very end of this video. Please do like and subscribe. Subscribe because we can do this again. I got other videos that I will be uploading, rants and watches and so forth. So stick with me. This is Mark Goldberg from Mark Vlogs Watches with the Jean Richard Aquascope. Oh, the heck with it. I decided to go video and um, you can get a good look at this thing. The, uh, the second hand um, is extremely visible. Now, I wore this to sleep last night so I could kind of test out the loom for you, and I just charged it. So, of course, it's quite bright on the one hand. On the other hand, what I can tell you from experience is it lasts, you know. In about five hours, it's going to be quite a bit dimmer than this, but it will still be legible. So, if you if you wake up to pee, you know, about, you know after you've gone to sleep, you're still going to be able to know what time it is. Um, and it'll make it through a whole movie. Uh, you know, it'll make it through a double creature feature if you charge it up. Once again, please like and subscribe. This is Mark Goldberg from Lark Vlogs Watches. Let's do it again. Hey.